Hello everybody, we are Ketchup and Mustard, former professional Mortal Kombat players and now professional commentators and content creators specialising in all things competitive Mortal Kombat, and we've partnered with Future Game Show to bring you 10 things that you must do if you want to get good at Mortal Kombat 1. First off, choose the right character. Your character is the first choice you must make before playing any match in MK1, and choosing the right one for you is essential, primarily a character you enjoy playing, as you could be using them for a long time. Different characters will offer different experiences. For example, you could have Smoke for mix-ups, Baraka for aggressive rushdown, Scorpion for mobility, or Ashura for screen control. Think about it as the way you want to play the game, and just simply choose a character that fits that. But even with all that said, you might still be wondering, are there just some characters that are good for me to play if I'm new to the game and I just want to learn the mechanics the best way possible? Well, thankfully in Mortal Kombat 1, there are a couple of picks that I would definitely recommend for that. The first I recommend is Liu Kang. Now, he may be the main character in Mortal Kombat 1, but this character genuinely features a wonderful collection of fundamental tools. Really good attacks up close that can teach you the basics of rushing down your opponent with good moves, and also the ability to keep the opponent at range, the term space control in general being that you control the screen. You have various moves that can keep the opponent at distance and really keep the control in your hands. Liu Kang has all of these moves that you would want, and if you're trying to learn the game, he is a fantastic character to start with. Another character that's good for newcomers is Johnny Cage. This character is generally one of the best characters in the game right now anyway. However, his impressive collection of up-close tools, mostly lying in attacks that are advantageous for him to keep the pressure going, makes him one of the best characters to learn if you're trying to rush down your opponent as a newer player. He isn't particularly hard to play, and he pairs with tons of efficient cameos. With Liu Kang and Johnny Cage combined, you can can learn a lot of what makes this game work at a basic level. Choose the right cameo. The cameo fighter system is the lifeblood of Mortal Kombat 1, and much like your main fighter is something you'll have to factor in when going into a match. The cameo fighter system exists to amplify your options with assist moves that can be called throughout the game. But a way we recommend choosing your cameo fighter is to look at what your main character is doing, and simply choose a cameo that either improves something they're already good at, or a cameo that gives them something they do not normally have. It isn't an easy decision, but one that must be made with care. Do not be afraid to experiment until you find a cameo that works. However, if you are a total newcomer to Mortal Kombat 1 and are looking for a simple and efficient cameo to find your feet, I recommend the Serena cameo. Serena gives you a bit of extra HP, which goes a long way if you are a new player. She grants easy combo extensions thanks to the double knife assist. She gives you a efficient, fast recovering basic projectile to help in almost every single matchup. And importantly, she has a flip kick attack that can be used as a reversal. A reversal is an attack that can be used on the defense to clear some space and disengage if your opponent is constantly on top of you and rushing you down. It can also work as an attack off the ground if they're not ready, and that is something that we call a wake-up attack. Understand your movement options. Before you even use an attack in a match, the first thing you'll do the vast majority of the time is move your character to where your attacks are most effective. Movement can be broken down into walking, dashing, jumping, and sometimes even using attacks that move your character a certain way. Walking is a very non-committal method of movement that allows you to be specific in where you want to go. Dashing is faster, but it moves you in set chunks of distance, and jumping covers the most space and allows you to threaten attacks from above, but it leaves you in a state where you cannot block and you can potentially be anti-aired. Know your attacks and inputs. When you've chosen your character, it is time to know what attacks to use and what buttons these attacks are tied to. Every character in the game has a move list, which will tell you in detail every attack your character has and the input required to pull it off. 
Using the right moves is crucial to seeing success in matches, so make sure to get these inputs memorized. It can be a bit daunting at first, but we recommend starting with the most important attacks first and going from there, such as your go-to standing combo string, your best low poke, important special moves, etc. And you start using more as you get more comfortable. Bringing us back to Liu Kang for a minute, let's talk about those exact moves. A really good up-close combo string is something like forward back kick front kick. It's a mid-starting string that hits multiple times and leads into various special moves for good damage. Liu Kang's low front kick is a far-reaching, really efficient low attack that can create some space and importantly, set up some offense if the attack lands. The same can be said for your down back kick. And if you're looking for good special moves, the back forward front punch is a simple, fast, really good projectile that can be used almost everywhere on the screen. If you want to be more offensive focused, back forward front kick or back forward back kick will give you good pressure and damage up close. Learn attack direction and how to hit opponents. You might now be thinking, well, it's all well and good knowing my moves, but how do I attack and what moves are worth it? How do I even hit my opponent anyway? This is where attack direction comes in. In Mortal Kombat 1, there is a block button, but you cannot block every move at all times. Some attacks, such as a crouching back kick, will hit you low, and they can only be blocked when in a crouch block and other attacks, such as jumping attacks on the way down, will hit as what we call overheads, and they can only be blocked while standing up, and every character's universal throw cannot be blocked at all, although it can be crouched. In addition, there are also highs and mids to consider. Highs and mids can be blocked regardless of a stand or crouch block, but high attacks can be ducked underneath by simply crouching, whilst mids will hit crouching opponents. Typically, high attacks are extremely fast, while mids are often a bit slower to offset this. Learn how to defend yourself. We've already talked about how to deal damage and generally be on the offense, but defense is equally as important as let's not forget, your opponent's goal is to hit you just as much as yours is to hit them. Blocking is essential to any match of MK1, and everything we've mentioned about attack direction applies here as well. Blocking puts you in a state that you cannot move, and generally, crouch block is safer than stand block, as most overheads in the game tend to be slower than lows and can be reacted to if you're quick enough. Walking back to build space between you and your opponent can give you an opening to counter-attack, and also being prepared to stop opponents from jumping at you with anti-airs, such as a basic uppercut with crouching back punch. All of this will help you stay safe in the heat of battle. Manage your enhanced meter. Resource management is paramount to seeing consistent success in matches, and MK1 is no different in the fighting game genre. As you play through the rounds, you will be building enhanced meter that you can spend on a variety of game-changing mechanics. This meter is built by dealing damage, dealing chip damage on your opponent's block, performing special moves and getting the first hit in round one, and taking damage. All of this can be spent on enhancing your special moves for a single bar, sometimes two depending on the move itself, and for all three you can execute a combo breaker allowing you to escape a combo and saving yourself from damage. Now, typically, you should be saving your breaker for situations where you will lose the game or do not want to take heavy damage output. There's a time and a place for a breaker, and it can save you in a match. Manage your cameo meter. Another resource you have to stay on top of is your cameo meter. We've already explained what your cameo fighter does, but it does come at a cost. Cameos have their own meter that will regenerate over time spent, and the rate in which it regenerates depends on the move used. Most cameos will recharge at either a fast, regular, or slow rate, and some moves cost the entire bar, while others will cost half of it. As this is a resource that comes back over time and is not controlled by you, you can be a bit more willing to spend it. However, you'll need to make sure not to waste this, as cameo attacks are game-changing and using too many and having it on constant cooldown could be dangerous. 
Understand the difference between safe and unsafe moves. Frame data is a common term thrown around in the fighting game space, and it can seem rather intimidating to fighting game newcomers. But don't worry, we won't go into detail here, but the overall point of this tip is knowing what safe versus unsafe means. Let's take a common move for example, Sub-Zero Slide. Everyone likes using this, and when this attack is blocked, Sub-Zero cannot block for a certain amount of time, and during that time, you actually hit him for free and deal guaranteed damage. This is called a punish. Compare this to his low string in back low kick back kick, which once blocked, he's actually safe and cannot be hit. As a general thing, you will want to use your character's fastest attack that leads to good damage and use that to punish unsafe attacks. If you want to learn which moves are unsafe, training mode is a wonderful thing. Simply record your opponent doing a move that you want to test and simply block it and find out if your button works for free. And finally, stay calm amidst the chaos. This might sound vague, but hear me out. It's important to keep your cool in a match. MK1 is already shaping up to be an extremely aggressive and fast-paced game, and losing your composure is a sure way for a good match to turn very bad very quickly. Being able to stay relaxed and focused will help you at all points of the match, and overall, help you improve at the game much quicker. And that's our list for 10 things a player must do to get good at Mortal Kombat 1. I would like to thank Future Game Show for having us feature on this episode, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you'd like to throw in some extra support, let us know in the comments section what tips you would give a newcomer, and on top of that, perhaps even consider dropping a subscription. A little bit goes a long way. Thank you all so much for checking this out, take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.